This happens to be one of my favorite of the puzzles. It's called cross sums. For some folks, you may see this grid and go, hey, that's called Kukuro. Well, there's two different names that we call it. For our purposes, we call it cross sums. Very quickly, we'll read through the instructions because it's always a good place to start. The numbers in the black squares refer to the sum of the digits to be filled into the empty spaces. The number below a diagonal line is the sum of the numbers below it, as we said. The numbers above the diagonal line is the sum of the numbers to the right of it. Place one digit, one through nine. There are no zeros in this puzzle. Important, no digit is used more than once in any particular digit combination. We've outlined one area in the diagram. If you need help starting the puzzle, the digit combination for this area is on the next page. For our purposes, we're going to try to work this puzzle without using the hint. All right, let's step back here and find out why the number 45 is so important on this puzzle. The minimum number of digits that you're going to use on any horizontal or vertical are two squares. And the minimum total that you can get for two squares is going to obviously be one and two, the lowest two digits you can use without repeating. We won't use one and one because that would be repeating a digit. One and two is going to give us three. One plus two plus three is going to give us six. One, two, three, and four is going to give us ten. And as we continue working each one of these, 15. And if we go all the way 1 through 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, if you add those all up, you'll find that that number reaches 45, which is right here. Now, the numbers aren't always really nice and neat in order like that. Sometimes you'll get 1, 3, and 2, which is still going to be 6. And there will be numbers such as 7, and if we have three squares that we have to fill to reach seven, there's only one possible combination. One, two, and four. For some totals, there's going to be more than one possible combination. And as we work through the puzzle, you'll understand how that, uh, that all works. And I understand that this is also, for people who've already worked these types of puzzles, this is all kind of basic. But for our new viewers who maybe have not attempted the cross sums puzzles before, this is the groundwork that you need to start with. And just like in a crossword puzzle, you're going, we're going to work a, what we call a first pass through the cross sums to get the basic, easy answers. And once you have that groundwork laid down, you'll continue and uh, try to get the more difficult words that maybe aren't quite so obvious to start with. We're going to work horizontally first. The way I like to work it, and everybody has their own method of, of working through the puzzles, but I like to try to do as many of the horizontal answers as I possibly can. Now on 14, we have two squares here that we can possibly use. For 14, for example, we could use 5 plus 9, or we could also use 8 plus 6. We don't know exactly what it could be. Are there other possible combinations? 5 plus 9, 8 plus 6? Well, for 14, how about 7 plus 7? We know that that can't work. Why? Because we're repeating the digit 7, so that possibility is out. The only two possible combinations, could we go 4 plus 10? No, because 10 is too big of a digit to put into one of the squares. So we now know that the only two combinations that can go into the 14 is 5, 9, or 8, 6. That's a good place to start. We know that this has to be 5, 6, 8, or 9, 5, 6, 8, or 9. We're going to come back to that. That's just a note to myself. Let's continue through the puzzle and do our horizontal lines and see how far we can get. For 17, only two possible combinations, or there's actually only one possible combination, 8 plus 9 or 9 plus 8, which is why I said 2. But it's actually 1, the numbers are just inverted. We know that this has to be 8 or 9, 8 or 9. For 10, there's many possible combinations that we can make using 3 squares and 10. We're going to leave that blank for now. Same thing for 17. 16, this is an interesting one. Once again, there's only two possible digits that we can use to make 16, and that's going to be 7 and 9. 7, 9. 7 or 9. 
17, we've already established 8 or 9, 8 or 9. 23 is another one. There's actually only one combination of numbers using three squares that will add up to 23. And this is just the way my magazines look by the time I finished uh, doing the puzzles in the magazine, is that I have notes all over in the margin. That's perfectly fine. That's the way you should do it, if it helps to get it down on paper. What are the three numbers that we can use to come up with 23? 6, 8, 9. 6 plus 8 plus 9. So we know that those are the three numbers that we're going to need across here. Let's put in 6, 8, 9 in each one of those squares. 23, we just established, you'll find a lot of repetitiveness in these puzzles, and once you figured it out the first time, the second time becomes much easier. Interesting here. 21. Six squares for 21. Let's go back here. We didn't go down quite that far on this, but if we have 15, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we add that 6, you'll find that that's 21. 1 through 6 are the only six numbers that we can use. I'm not going to put 1 through 6 in each one of these squares, but we'll come back to that. Here's 26. That's another one that's got many possible combinations. We'll wait on that. 11 is a very interesting uh, number with four squares. Once again, only one possible combination will bring us to 11. That's 1, 2, 3, and 5. Let's put those numbers in. One, two, three, and five. Four. What two digits can we use to come up with four using only two squares? Well, it has to be one or three. We don't know which one's which yet, but this is all part of the work uh, in getting uh, through the first pass of the puzzle. Three. There's only one possible combination. We did that before. If we come back over here very quickly, one and two. Back down to here. We know that this is going to be one or two. One or two. Fifteen, we know that that's one through five, but that's too many numbers to put into these squares for right now. Sixteen, we know that that's seven or nine. Seven or nine. Thirty-four is an interesting one. There's only one possible combination that will give us thirty-four. That's four, six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll come back on that one. That's thirty-four, though. A little note in the margin. 22 is going to be one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and seven. Here's 23 again. 24. Well, if we know that 23 is six, eight, or nine, we know the combinations for 24 are seven, eight, or nine. We're almost down to the bottom on our first pass. Six, eight, nine, six, eight, nine. On each one of those squares. 11, we're going to leave blank for a moment. 3, 1, and 2. And the final one, 11, we're going to leave blank for a moment. Well, we've just made our first pass on all of the horizontal lines and filled in the ones that are somewhat obvious. While we don't have any specific numbers narrowed down, this is going to become very helpful as we start working our vertical uh, possibilities and then cross-referencing. Let's take a break, <laughs> catch our breath, and when we come back, we're going to do our second pass, start with the vertical uh, possibilities, cross-reference, and start filling in our first numbers on our cross-sums puzzle. And we'll be right back with that right after this.